BAE systems pop up everywhere at the Bahrain International Air Show. And you can see many related videos of this from whodoeswhat.tv plus the previous air show. Among the technology that BAE systems confidently show off is the state-of-the-art and software updatable Eurofighter or Typhoon, as we've highlighted before at the British business shows. We see the incredible Typhoon flying here, and surely governments evaluate its superiority constantly while being bombarded with options. At ground level though, enthusiasts like me can only dream of having this ultimate toy for Christmas. A ride in the Typhoon is well, okay, but who does what .tv are still working on it? No, the closest we're ever gonna get is a ride in the simulator, which has its own booth at the show. Well, the gentleman that's going to show us, because certainly I'd love a go myself, but I think I would really, um, what's the word they use on Top Gear? Cock it up. But Paul Smith, he works for BAE Systems. He's a demonstration pilot, ex-RAF himself, aren't you, Paul? Absolutely. 23 years in the Royal Air Force and the last couple of years uh, demonstrating and looking at future capabilities for Typhoon. Right, Paul, please take us inside and show us. Good, sir. First, I'll do a takeoff. Uh, Typhoon's a very powerful aircraft, so it gets airborne in about six seconds, just 1,100 feet. And you, the guys will have seen that on the display today. So, 130 knots, I get airborne, and uh, the aircraft's immediately maneuverable. So, if I need to, after takeoff, I can immediately start to maneuver the aircraft very rapidly. And it's very crisp. But also, it's a weapon system, first and foremost. So, uh, actually, uh, in the scenario here, we're out in the Middle East, in, in Emirates actually, uh, and I've got a scenario where there's a terrorist in a truck that's a moving target, generally quite a hard target to hit, uh, and it's, in a, it's close to one of the cities, so I have to be very careful uh, about where it's going. So, uh, with the Brimstone missile and the, weapons, the Typhoon weapon system, I can very quickly and effectively target that. So with a couple of selections, I very quickly zoom into the area of interest with the pod, uh, and I've found the two trucks down here. So if we look at the display here, you can see that there are the two uh, uh, trucks. And although they're doing 30 or 40 kilometers an hour, the laser designation pod is automatically tracking them. They're actually just down here um, on the ground. What so, speed are we doing? So we're doing 470 knots, so about 500 miles an hour. If I select the Brimstone missile, then uh, very quickly I'm into a target solution. You're seeing it's flashing pickle there, so I can fire the missile off. There goes the brimstone missile, and in about nine seconds that's going to impact on the terrorist vehicle. The great thing about brimstone is very accurate against uh, moving targets, but also very discriminate. It will only hit that target, and all around it is safe. So a very uh, accurate weapon. You see it impacted, and if we look down towards the ground, you can see the little smoke trail just over here where the target was hit. So very accurate. Likewise, if there's a terrorist boat attacking a ship, mm. then I can uh, very easily with a brimstone target that as well. So if I zoom out and have a look, mm. then here's a, a cruise vessel. Mm. And in this case, this scenario that we've put together, there's a little terrorist ship here that's trying to attack that cruise vessel. So I'm going to point track that. Again, select a brimstone because it's a moving target and already I'm into a weapon solution and I can pickle off a weapon. This time it's a bit further away, 15 seconds, and as we look out, the cruise vessel is just down here. You can just see the ship uh, of interest. So I can back up and day or night, I can track that target and I can very effectively target it. So you can see I can support the army, I can support the navy, so there's the vessel is uh, eliminated. And if there's uh, enemy fighters out there, then I can use the radar systems to uh, quickly target multiple enemy aircraft. So in this case, the radar has detected six enemy aircraft out the front. And you can see I've got a shoot queue, so I can target one, two, three, four. As quickly as that, I've targeted four enemy aircraft. And the missile's outbound, and down on the head down display here, I get a good indication of what's going on in terms of the aircraft I've targeted. So I know they're hostiles, and I'm very uh, uh, confident that the missile's going in the right direction. So, lots of information available to me. A very complex situation very, made very simple for the pilot who's flying. Got about uh, 10 seconds time of flight before those missiles impact, but effectively, the weapon system has identified them as hostiles, has allowed me to engage them, and I can engage multiple aircraft at once. So it allows me to really defend the airspace. 
uh, and uh, a very effective weapon system that's being used to great effect currently in Syria and Iraq by the Royal Air Force. Can you lock and leave? You lock and leave when you do that? Yeah, absolutely. So those three aircraft are actually uh, targeted right now, but now the missile is autonomous, so I can turn away. So I've uh, engaged and targeted them, and I can turn away now and make sure they can't have any missiles coming back towards me. And the other great thing about Typhoon is I can very quickly accelerate. So I'm doing just 300 knots at the moment, Mach 0.6, but even with all of these weapons on, I'm accelerating very quickly now through 450, Mach 0.8 now, and I'll very quickly go supersonic and can escape from the target and threat environment. So great performance underpins all of the weapon systems and the weapons that are on the aircraft. So you can engage so many targets in one time all the time? And there's no, there's no uh, there doesn't yeah. seem to be any restriction at all here. Well, the restrictions, we have very strict rules of engagement and legal restrictions, but the sensors on the aircraft give me great confidence that, that I know exactly I'm only going to target the hostile guys. The accuracy of weapons like Brimstone and Paveway 4 means that I can have absolute confidence that I'm not going to hit uh, innocent civilians or hit friendly forces. Uh, and in a close air support scenario, I can use my helmet to designate friendlies as well as hostiles, and the aircraft shows them in different ways. So I have complete situational awareness of, of the scenario out there. So in a warfighting situation, it gives me great confidence as a pilot, not only that I can take out other aircraft, but I can really effectively support my troops and Navy forces and, uh, and protect civilians on the ground. Now we're still flying at the moment, uh, yeah. and you're not taking any controls, is it flying? Is it... Yeah, so the aircraft is, that's what I didn't mention, is incredibly easy to control. I've flown many fighters and other aircraft, and the Typhoon has purposefully been made very easy. So it's got what we call auto trim and complete carefree handling. So if I let go of the stick, it keeps going in the, in the direction I left it. I can do anything with the stick, do full, full back stick maneuvers, and the aircraft will give me maximum G. I can't uh, damage the aircraft or overstress any of the components, and it will know exactly what fuel state, what weapons are on the aircraft, and will give me maximum performance. So, yeah, the aircraft is incredibly easy to fly, even to the extent if I got completely disorientated, if I just press this button here, there's something called disorientation recovery. The autopilot kicks in, and then it's now flying straight, just slightly climbing with a steady speed, and the aircraft is, is fine. And now when I'm ready, I just paddle it out, and now I've got control again. So really a lot of safety features on the aircraft to make it uh, easy for the pilot and optimal to operate. Have you got sort of ground proximity and all that sort of stuff, warnings yes, and everything? So if I start pointing towards the ground, then uh, the ground proximity warning system will very quickly give me a heads up that I should be doing something about it. Again, so if I leave it there, it's saying pull up and it gives me an arrow to tell me which way to go. So I get plenty of warning, you see enough warning there for me to recover actually 15 feet, 1500 feet, 1500 above the ground. Yeah. And I've got great agility as you saw in the air show today from Johnny's display. The aircraft gives me my, a lot of options to change my position in the sky and regain and lose energy very quickly, which gives me a great air combat capability. Well, I must admit, I mean, we're not actually moving, but it feels like we're moving here. And it's a very, very good d demonstration. Very quickly, Paul, give him uh, a couple of pointers on that, on that screen, those screens in front of you there, because he's going to both places at the same time. Yeah, so absolutely. So these three screens here in front of me give me a range of information. There's a, a lot of different information I'm put on there. This is defensive aid, so it tells me whether the enemy are looking at me. This is the pod, so it gives me information. You saw that the TV display at night or day. Uh, and then there's a, a, a whole lot of other information. Uh, targeting from the radar. This is like a TomTom -tom display if you like, but as well as my information and a map on here, I've got data links to my wingmen. So that's my wingman here. This is a friendly aircraft, another friendly aircraft here. And if I zoom out, then I've also got uh, uh, other maps I can put on there. And I'll see, sorry that was zooming in, so zooming out, you'll see that there are other friendlies as well as uh, hostile aircraft down here from the data link. Can I receive that from uh, AWACS or other uh, radar aircraft or just other friendlies? So I can really zoom in and out and get a lot of information and I can click on and, and really dive into the detail here or I can just get a kind of a big picture that keeps me aware of what's going on around me. So a lot of information that's fused together in an intelligent way to give me in a simple picture what is a complex battlefield situation. How long does it take a pilot to learn this? Uh, Generally from starting, from someone coming out of school, they do about a year of officer training, then about two to two and a half years of, of flying training. Starting on light aircraft, and the last six to nine months will be on something like Typhoon, where they get uh, the last workup and conversion and combat ready. And then they, they will be uh, on a frontline squadron um, doing the tasks that the Royal Air Force is doing right now. 
I'd imagine it's a very special sort of person you need for this. I mean, the, the, the fail rate must be quite high, surely. Well, there's, there's very uh, strict selection procedures, but, um, but actually it's just a balanced, a balanced person. There's no superhumans flying jets. It's just a combination of academics, hard work, general physical fitness and, and just application, really. Not a job for me, unfortunately, with dementia setting in. Paul Smith, thank you very, very much indeed. I think we've got a, an excellent little shoot there. Incredible. Very, very pleased with it. Thank you very much indeed. Good stuff. Glad to be here. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Video gamers, eat your heart out. Because Paul does this day in, day out for a living. This is Gig Hopkins for WhoDoesWhat.tv at the BAE Systems Typhoon Simulator booth at the Bahrain International Airshow.